<laughs> Good morning, everybody. It is 14 minutes past That's 8 o'clock right now. Welcome back to the program. And our friends over at Stivers Ford Lincoln are downright proud to salute great organizations in town. And by golly, Jackie, we have one of our favorites. Yes, we do. Repertory Theater of Iowa. One of their last productions before they merge into uh, Iowa, Iowa stage, stage as yes. we've talked about here on our program so very honored to have Sean Wilson here along with Mark Gruber who are going to be talking about that final production the turn of the screw the turn of the screw the turn of the screw and it's not to be confused with taming of the taming shrew, of the shrew okay, now, which is our that Shakespeare happen? That's our Shakespeare uh, that's going to happen in June. Okay. Uh, but first up is Turn of the Screw. So now that we've got those two out of the way, <laughs> and we're going to got people so thoroughly confused, <laughs> right. which is the whole idea. Yeah. Um, so the Turn of the Screw, if you don't know it, it's uh, it's a it's based off a of Henry James. Um, it's a short story, I think, a novella, and uh, it basically it takes place in the 1870s. And if you want some kind of like correlation it's like Jane Austen but with ghosts mm, so okay. a little uh, spooky. spooky haunting yes. uh, kind of play and um, uh, so basically the, the the main story is this um, uh, young governess uh, gets a job to go to this house in Bly in England and um, she she loves it this is like her dream come true to go to this house and then she starts seeing some some creepy things, and and uh, our our governess is played by the lovely uh, Tiffany Flory, who is a Chloris Award winner, and then we have Mark Gruber over here, who is playing all the other characters and building, um, building the whole kind of atmosphere around her with everyone yeah, else. You, you, you get to play man. Man, yeah, well, <laughs> universally, yeah. <I've> <laughs> <laughs> so you get paid extra for that, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, it, it's a challenge to play uh, both the spectrum of a 10-year-old boy, a troubled 10-year-old, and uh, the housekeeper, Mrs. Gross. Who she's is my favorite. She's lo she's so So much you fun. really do play all the other characters. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, you, you play like what? Four different characters? Yeah. Play the narrator? The challenge, <laughs> it's Uncle. kind of a joke, but in the space of two and a half seconds, there is three characters played at one moment in the show. So you'll have to come and see which moment that is. Two and a half seconds, Two and a half seconds three, characters. three characters. Nice. That yes. could be a world's record. Very, How very about fun. that? There you go. And Crowd so this wild. is, we moved in uh, yesterday. That's what you're kind of seeing. We haven't, uh, we actually moved into the come and go yesterday. That's okay. Tiffany's dress right there, uh, which is, has been handmade by our costumer, em uh, Emily Ganfield. And uh, there's this, the set. We, we were putting it up uh, yesterday and um, really got into the space for the first time. As you can see, it's very minimalistic. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't, we have one chair and that's it. There's no props. Uh, it's basically just Mark, and we're just throwing Mark and Tiffany up on the stage. That's how the play is written, uh, with no props and no uh, real furniture or anything like that. So what's great about it is, is the set can actually move. So when you come there, it might look like, okay, it's a house, but we play it in different areas. Mm -hmm. So the what uh, we play in the living room could suddenly turn out to be by the pond outside. So really it's all about lights and atmosphere rather than, okay. you know, props and furniture. Well, it's always amazing how you can transform the come and go theater and kind of in that black box space. Right. Uh, so we encourage everyone to always come out and see that. But if you're trying to get new eyeballs into the uh, theater and butts and seats, and, and of course, the Repertory Theater of Iowa always do an amazing job of uh, honoring the classics. Right. Um, yeah. But I feel like a lot of people are going to the movie theaters right now because they love these haunting stories and There's finding a lot out of what them right happened. Now, right? So yeah. it's like if you're wanting to see something that happened before the movies and all those effects, uh, come see a great play. Right. And uh, this this play in particular, w well, just in the come and goes uh, history so far, we haven't done a play like this where this is just kind of amusement park fun, right? Like there, it's uh, it's just a, it's just great to try and I mean we're, we're really trying to work out ways that we make this thing scary we don't have to work too hard the story is already kind of uh, built that way but not so scary that's like oh gosh it's a horror story you, you know I mean, yeah, yeah it's more it's more like uh, chilling and fun and and it's a but that, it's a ghostly tale right the, the, the key thing that Henry James did and I think is successful in this dramatic version of it is that after the show if you go with somebody you'll be talking about what happened afterwards you'll be talking about saying you can't be serious. You did. You fought that, and then because it's he rides this strange little middle road where it could be this or it could be that, mm -hmm. and that's part of the mystery of it. It's written that way, and I think the play successfully does that. Yeah, part of it is, is if the ghosts are real. Is the governess uh, really seeing the ghosts, or is this just figments of her imagination? imagination. And all these things are. 
and there's enough to support each side. So really, it's a mystery throughout, mystery about what's happened in the house before, but also what's happening at that moment. And really for you to decide after you walk out what really happened. Now, Mark, I want to go back to the multi-characters that you do in this presentation. Uh, how difficult was it to wrap your brain around each character and have conversations with themselves or yourself, I should say? Well, I mean, it's in the script, and so it's not like it's a, an untested piece of theater. And so somebody has already successfully run the track with this piece, and so you can sense that when in rehearsal. Sean, my excellent director, is giving me directions to be able to say, you know, this works better than that, but uh, it's in the text and uh, the transfer of finding the sort of energy or position of Mrs. Gross, who's very closed and maybe a little bosomy and maybe about 60 years old, and she does uh, have a Scottish accent a little bit. And then a 10-year-old boy, you can imagine, is a little bit more wired mm -hmm. and uh, troubled and... Uh, so, I don't know, the fascination is just a, an actor exercise that's just so much fun. Right. Is that what kind of drew you to playing this part? Uh, I don't know what drew I, I mean, RTI chose this piece because it's a Henry James and it has a classical thread. Mm -hmm. So thank you for mentioning our classical heritage and doing plays about classics. But for me, I just uh, thought that it would be an interesting challenge and Sean thought well enough to see that maybe I could pull this off. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will tell you something. He pulls it off. It's pretty amazing. And, and, and w what's really great about Mark's characters are they—they they are very physical. You know, when he's talking about his pop, he. You see him physically transform before he, he ever says a word. He takes you know? on the role. He does all f 500 of them. I don't know. <laughs> throw a couple more in there. I have to go to the show and count to see and how, how many. Let me tell you things. what, his sound effect work is also amazing, oh. by the way. He oh, does, Mark does all the, over here he's got, okay. he does all the sound Ooh. effects too, and uh, <laughs> he plays the piano. It's amazing. The, the, the man of many talents, but a show you do not want to miss, folks. Uh, I, I love it when you can do something very simple on stage, but it makes, you know, you're, you're able to transform and go to many different areas and characters and things like that. So a piece you don't want to miss, a classic, uh, courtesy of Repertory Theater of Iowa, and when can we start seeing this wonderful play? This Friday. 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 And Lou, do you know where to park when you go downtown? <laughs> Anywhere you want, because then you have to go downtown and get after they tow it. No, there's a there's a garage right over there. It's 39 steps yes. from the parking garage it's, to the front door. You cannot have that be, you know, the reasons why. You've no, come the downtown. parking garage is very handy. Ninth yeah. and Cherry. And if people want information on tickets or where they need to go, where should they go? So we're running through next Sunday, and if you want tickets, you got to go now, rtiowa.com. Okay. RTIowa. Dot com. Dot com. We run great parking. We got great parking. Great parking, it's and it's through April 30th. Did through we say April that? April 30th. 30th. Yes, yeah. through Perfect. next Sunday. So don't miss it. Only eight shows. All Wonderful. right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you, gentlemen, you. for coming in today. And thank you, gentlemen and lady. And lady. <laughs> lady. <laughs> You're welcome. And come see it. Come see it Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> it's <gonna be> scary. <laughs> I get to watch that every night. <laughs> You're a lucky man. We'll you right need back. to see it as well, folks. This is CW Iowa Live in West Des Moines. <laughs>